I would say that both language and mathematics are reducible to logic. Brilliant. Would you say that logic and language are products of mind? Now you said Josephus was first. Fine, let's just chuck him in the bin. I'll use Tacitus. Tacitus said that Jesus. Have you read what he wrote? Tacitus said in the original language. Have you read it? Josephus. Now he sounds like the Dowerty. Frederick Engels, Rosa Luxemburg, Karl Marx, they all thought that Jesus Christ should be interpreted as a kind of utopian socialist. Marxist theory denies the idea of metaphysics. These things are not real. Yeah? But Marx said that in a Marxist state, a new kind of humanity would emerge. That's an ontological statement that is based upon metaphysics. Internally contradictory logic. How are you doing? What's your name? We could stick the ladder in the middle and then you go up and talk, come down and I go up and talk, and then we know clearly who's meant to be talking. <laughs> I think, we, I think we can distinguish voices and faces. Fair enough, go on. Oh, go. I don't really know what, I don't really know what to argue. Point of view. Well, Cortes is another subject. <laughs> you can, you can, you can talk, so long as it starts from where I finish. From God. So long as it starts from where I finish. You don't believe in God, you know. What's your beef with that? If you were not starting from where I finish. If you weren't a believer in God, <laughs> yeah. how would you explain the world? If I were not, if you were not a believer, I would explain the world as being the result of random and guided coincidences that have no intrinsic or absolute meaning and is pitiless, merciless and totally unconcerned and our natures are just animalistic. Why but you ask me how I would yeah, explain I mean, okay, okay. the world if I, I didn't believe There's a reason why I'm doing that because Generally when I go around and ask people like their views, I'm not trying to like have a go at you. I'm That's just trying right. to decipher exactly where you're coming from. So I can tell you there was an element, oh I know where you're coming from the Bible, but I mean if you're like me an atheist or a uh, materialist or whatever, you might delve beneath. So what I got from what you just said was you have a tremendously negative view of the world and of human beings in general. Yeah. And that you see your role perhaps as saving them from themselves rather than seeing in themselves. I mean, I've met other people who are Christians who have a different perspective on this, like Lord Soper used to speak here for decades. And he didn't have this negative connotation that we seem to have about the nature of man. Am I wrong in that? So, so let me, is, is let that me, just a let misquotation? Me, let, me reply, let me reply. So, as a, you asked, we, we, you asked the question, how would I sp explain the no, world? I that, yeah, but it seemed very yeah. negative. Am well, I wrong? Yeah, I allowed you to speak. Yeah, that's why I suggested putting in the ladder. In. So, I believe as a Christian that that actually God does exist. That the world is not meaningless, isn't without value. That, sorry, that it does have value. That there is meaning to our lives. Why no, one the two second, one second, I Why the two synonyms? I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt okay, you. You must observe the rules. There is no rule, yeah, but anyway. Okay. This is why I suggested there putting the ladder rule. in the there middle. There is a rule, but anyway, I'll, I'll, This I'll, is why I suggested putting the ladder in the middle. And then you said, no, we can distinguish with voices and faces, and now you're interrupting. So, well, brother, some interruption. So, brother, what, what, so, my, my, my voice is gone. If you want to hear me, you're going to have to speak, you're going to have to move in. So I'll try my best, I'll try my best. I'm projecting my voice that way. So what I would say to you is, as a Christian, I believe that human beings have intrinsic dignity that is given to them because they are made in the image of God. And that dignity also means that there is meaning and value to their lives and that actually the very universe itself witnesses to that reality, the reality of human purpose. And that human beings have this dignity but that human dignity has been marred, has been marred by something that we call original sin, which is that this genetically within the human condition, there is this desire to turn away from the, the, the objective meaning and purpose that God has put into the world, that is to glorify him and turn towards themselves, to create their own meaning, to be their own gods, to live their own lives according to their own wills, wants and desires. And that this sin has marred human dignity. 
and that by becoming a follower of Jesus Christ, we recover that dignity, both in a legalistic sense and in an ontological sense. I mean, it doesn't take away from the negativity of your standpoint. I've met, I've met Christians who are not negative about the nature of man. You seem to hold a fundamentally negative view of man without God. So in other words, what I was asking was, if you were not a Christian, I don't know if you became a Christian or if you think you were born one. So before you became a convert to Christianity, did you view mankind negatively? Fundamentally negatively? Because that's what I'm getting from you. You're negative about humanity. And you have to have an external monitor, controller, observer, uh, punisher, uh, uh, man who offers treats, or God who offers treats, to encourage people to behave in a way that you consider glorifies and edifies Jesus and God. I have met Christians, like I said, Lord Soper, for example, who believe in the fundamental goodness of man and that their goodness manifests itself in the highest forms of, if you like, human activity, music, culture and so on, which bring us closer in his view, I'm not a believer in God, but bring us closer in his view, now he's dead, to God. Whereas you seem to be implying that people have to bow down and, if you like, recognise how flawed and monstrous they are in order to escape from this, if you like, you know, a hell they're going to go to if they don't choose that path. And, and that's a, that, that if I find, is a very negative view of humanity. Shall I reply? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so firstly, if you want to describe my worldview as negative, I am not troubled by it, I'm quite happy to own it. You can see it however you want. Whatever emotional label you wish to ascribe to my worldview is irrelevant to the question of whether it is true. And that is actually what is more important. Not how we feel about a worldview, but whether a worldview corresponds to reality. That's the important question. Not whether we think it's positive, gooey, gushy, nice, comfortable, negative, uh, disheartening, hopeless. The question is, is the world cor worldview correspondent to the reality of the world as we experience it? Because however you see my worldview, if it is correct, then you have a moral duty to stand on what is true and to have your worldview correspond to reality as it is, not as we wish it to be. Sorry. There are three ways to measure a worldview. One, is a worldview internally coherent? Does it contradict itself? If I say that A is equal to B, and B is equal to C, I have to conclude that A is equal to C. If I say that A is equal not to C, but A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then I've contradicted myself. And that is an incoherent worldview, it is false. Secondly, wow, secondly, does my worldview correspond to reality? If I say I am floating here, then I am stating something that does not correspond to reality because I am standing here. So my description of reality is false. I think your description of reality is false. Finally, finally, my worldview also has to work. We look at communism. Marxism is a worldview that in every attempt to make it work has failed. It is a worldview that practically doesn't work because it does it because it contradicts reality and it's itself incoherent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and answer you. Right, guys, shall we move the cameras? Guys, shall we just move the cameras? You grab your camera, please. I know it isn't, it's COEs. COEs. Grab your ladders, grab your ladders, come forward, come forward. If you want to listen to me and I can, come over here. I was just moving it for you. Come here, bro. Let's continue our conversation. They want to argue. If you want to listen to the argument, you can stand there. If you want to listen to the conversation, you can come here. Let's try again. So, your premises you've just made, at least they have a foundation which I can discuss. I do not agree with the fundamental premises you're starting out. So what constitutes truth? Can you speak up? I can't hear you. What constitutes truth? I don't think you're correct. On. Truth is not composed of, 
if you like, equivalents of A and A. One and one. That's not what truth composed of. Truth starts from the acceptance. I know this is a little bit peculiar, but it starts from the acceptance that although one and one is two for the purposes of general orientation in the world, it's not fact. When you said you're not floating, well, you are and you aren't. You are and you aren't. There are what is floating. Floating means you're not directly connected to the earth. And you aren't. You aren't directly connected. There are molecules of air underneath your feet between you and the earth. You are floating. But for the purposes of specificity, of like generality, we say you're not floating. You're grounded on the earth. But you're not actually grounded on the earth. So one and one is not one, or one doesn't equal one, because you aren't, although you're Bob the Builder, I think, you aren't Bob the Builder. You are and you aren't. Why are you are and you aren't? Because when I say Bob the Builder, it means you now. But when I say Bob the Builder now, it means you now. And they are two different things. Very similar, barely changed, but if you were to accept them as fact, Bob the Builder is always Bob the Builder, then there would be no capacity to understand your birth and your death. Therefore, within a specific time frame and a specific organisation of matter on Earth, you exist as Bob the Builder at this moment and you are different now from when I said that second ago. So, and so the criteria of truth that you have started out with are mechanistic criteria. And that probably explains some of your, if you like, approach to the world because you seem to think that there's an absolute truth in God and that you are manifesting that and reflecting that in what you're saying. May I reply? So the, the, the problem is that you're, the, 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 the problem that I have with what you've said is that whilst, yes, in terms of the study of physics, the magnetic force between the atoms that make up the ground and the magnetic and the atoms that make up my trainers repel one another enough sufficiently that I don't sink into the earth. So at that level, what you're saying is true. I, I'm not disputing that. But language is connected to how we describe reality. So when I say I'm standing on the ground, you know what I mean? Exactly. So I'm not. I'm not, not actually. But no, fact. hold on. When I'm saying that I'm floating, I'm obviously describing not standing. Out. So if you're describing something as floating. We're not talking at the kind of atomistic level that you're speaking of. We're talking about how we describe our realities. So what I'm saying to you is that if you are saying that my three tests of truth are not, are, are not a basis for truth, and I admit there are other tests that we can apply, it seems to me that you're denying the idea that there is an objective truth, that, that there is a relative truth. Or do you believe in an objective truth? Well, I think you can approximate towards truth. So is there an objective truth? Well, there are objective truths, yep. but these objective truths must be, if you want total truth, you will never find total truth about everything. Never. And that's, that's why. My question. That's why. Well, okay, that's why, in a way, you require God, or many people require God. But well, the point being, there's an argument, for example, that was used against Marxism by a guy called Popper, and what he said was, and I'll put this to you: in your opinion, what is the strongest argument that you can muster against your own views? <laughs> okay. So, I, I have my own criticism, Mark. I believe no, no, your own, your yeah, strongest gonna, argument, one second, your own view. One second, I'm, go, I'm going to answer your question. Because I asked you about objective truth, and you did, you, you, you talked, so I'm going to... So, because the logic of my argument is that there is an objective truth. And if there is an objective truth, the next question is how do we access it? Now, in terms of your statement, what is the strongest argument that I can apply to my own beliefs? The no, no, against your own beliefs. Against my own beliefs. What would disprove yeah. them? My, I just want to state though, my criticism of Marxism is the same one of our church father, C.S. Lewis, who basically pointed out the myth of Hegelianism, which is entirely what Marxism is built on. The myth of Hegelianism. This idea that with a pathetic amount of information, we can decide the course of history and the way that history is moving. And that is the fundamental folly 
behind the whole of Marxism is that it is the hubris of man made manifest in the absence of God. Now, in terms of answering your question directly, the strongest argument against my own belief is, is simply the room for doubt that we have in terms of resurrection. Because whilst I believe that the reasons to believe in the resurrection are strong, I can't prove it 100%. It's outside of that realm of possibility. Precisely because a miracle is supernatural. It's non-reproducible. can't be replicated. Yeah? So that is the strongest argument against my belief. But I don't believe that that is strong enough to <laughs> renounce my belief. Now, let me ask you the same question. What's, you're a Marxist, right? Right. As a Marxist, you believe that human civilization has been guided by a dialectic of economy that is going to lead to a Marxist state. Is that correct? Roughly. Right. Based on the fact that the future is non-discernible, except by supernatural revelation, on what basis can you argue that the future belongs to a Marxist state? The Marxist state, but that's by the way. A Marxist not on that board. A Marxist economy of any board. The argument that prediction of the future is a purely, if you like, uh, superstitious concept. I think it's wrong. I think that it is possible to discern from the dynamics existing in society the general direction and trend in which society is moving. Obviously, that the ability to predict and to realise the objectives that you want to achieve is the obvious weakness in Marxism. It is, it is, if you are unable to realise those things, at what point does it become an unrealisable dream? And that obviously, well in my opinion, that is the weakest point. That's where, if you like, because Popper says that, he says that what's, what's the strongest argument against what can disprove your thesis? Yeah. So, and you must have that in order for it to be a scientific thesis in the first place. But Popper, Popper, Popper was um, arguing against, um, he was trying to put limits on rationalism and, and science. He was, he was showing the incoherence. Well, he was trying to show what science He was trying to define science. Trying to define yeah, science. He, was, he was trying to put the boundaries. You must be able to negate your yeah, argument. Yeah, exactly. Something must negate it, exactly. otherwise so, it's so, just so, dream. Yeah, exactly. But this is what Marx is guilty of. He's, that's what they say. He's I mean, I, I'm, I'm not but, but, but here's the thing. The evidence supports that. The, the, the proletariat revolution has, has not occurred. Actually, people are fatter, richer, wealthier and healthier now under a capitalist system, under a capitalist system than they have ever been in history under any other economic system, including those that claim to be Marxist. That's another question. I mean, I'm happy to go into that, but that's a, that, that's a general question which I talk about every week. Um, it's not really, we, we were dealing more with a philosophical standpoint. But, but my, it, it is about the philosophy, though, because bear in mind my criteria for truth, uh, which I think are wrong, internally coherent, does not contradict reality, and it works. Marxism doesn't work. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, could, equal, I could just equalise that out without making any effort. But I say, well, Christianity hasn't worked. Well, it doesn't prove anything. Well, how, what, what would be the measure? But, Sorry, you, but, you're wrong there. You're wrong. Because what does, clay, what does Christianity claim to give you? To give you salvation. Yeah. Salvation. How can you disprove that hell on earth? Well, you can't disprove that. Well, it depends on how can you say it does It also depends on your Christian. Because I've got no evidence that it does work. Well, hold on. The evidence that it does not work well, well. is not proof that it does it. Ah, Hillary. There's a difference here between... I'll leave you that. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'll leave you that. No, 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 no. We got, we got, he, he died we got our lifetime. Wait, no, no. I, I want to ask you we one more question. Some issues. You, I don't Marx, see the point. Marx, Marx, Marx right said. Marx said. Marx. Marx's theory denies the idea of metaphysics. These things are not real. Yeah. But Marx said that in a Marxist state, a new kind of humanity would emerge. That's an ontological statement that is based upon metaphysics. 
internally contradictory logic. But Marx was I think eight. Because, because Marx studied different societies. And in the different societies, people lived differently, yeah. had different morality, had different social organisation, had different sexual relations and human economic relations. And so that's the foundation upon which Marx justifies his argument that the social conditions in which people live determine the way they live in a consciousness. Is there a common thing with like humanity? Does it exist? So what? Is there such a thing as humanity? Does it exist? Yes. That's it's an ontological type. It's a metaphysical statement. I mean, most people won't know what ontology and my audience will know what ontology is. Most people won't. But you want to know a foundational belief system and whether it's, if you like, supernatural or grounded in reality. But Marxism is quite clearly a materialist philosophy. It's based on the belief that man, in their creation of wealth, to satisfy the wants of the mind and the body, shapes society. A society that is shaped by the relations established by those interconnections. Yep. And so, for their argument, for Marxist arguments, even religions and social organisation politics, art, but, culture, but are products of specific social economic conditions. But here's, here's the problem. So if, if, it is, it is, it is, if it is a materialistic worldview, then that means that there is no metaphysics, which means we cannot meaningfully speak of truth. We can't meaningfully speak. Well, I'm going to explain. We can't meaningfully speak of humanity. We can't meaningfully. I'm going to explain. We can't meaningfully speak about uh, about the he Hegelian uh, dialectic because the Hegelian dialectic was built on the idea of metaphysics, the idea of the zeitgeist. The idea of the zeitgeist of the spirit of the age. Spirit these, God, these, true, no, truth, is a, God. truth is a metaphysical claim. If you're saying something is true, then you're making a claim about metaphysics. No, I disagree with that. Are you aware of logical I think, I think, I think we're wandering off into fields that are not really worth discussing. Why, why, is Marx, why is a critique of Marxism not worth discussing? What you're doing is you're raising Hegel up. You're saying Hegel is a metaphysicist. Most people haven't read Hegel. Right? I've read a little, but not much. I've read a little bit of Hegel. And he's a metaphysicist. Hegel. Hegel. So are. Can you prove me wrong? I mean, there's a mixture in Hegel of Christianity, certainly dominated by a belief in God, but also mixed in with materialism. So that's metaphysical, and, right? And it, well, it, it wanders between the two. It's not strictly metaphysical. So if, if Karl Marx there is, is building his prism of history on the foundation of the as the foundation for his theoretical system, his theoretical belief system. Would you accept that every Marxist society we've ever tried to have a state? Well, because it's a materialist philosophy, it analyzes the foundations which have been created, which call themselves Marxist states, or Marxist governments, or communist governments, with the same analytical perspective. So just the same as, for example, a born-again Christian looks at um, the belief system of the Catholic Church as, if you like, alien to, to a pathway to God. So Marxists analyse, it's not quite the same, but at least within a better power, Marxists like myself analyse the systems that claim to be communist from the perspective of the method applied by Marx. In other words, we look at the material conditions and how they shape the social relations of society. We look at the external environment within which this took place and analyse what happened to that society. And then we draw up, we draw up a new critique of those societies and where they can go, based upon using the method developed by Marx, which was developed before those states came into existence. And I believe that method is still valid as the best method to understand states that claim to be communist states. So just the same as there have been various states that claim to be Christian states, which you may well disagree with. So, the, 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 I mean, I know you want to It's not to quite go. the same, but it's very I, similar. I know you're wanting to go, but I would leave you with a thought. 
The church survived every attempt to create communism. But communism itself has never, a communist state has never survived. The church that was founded by Jesus Christ, the quarter of the world lives in the Chinese the world lives in the Chinese government. Has survived for 2,000 years. Communism in China is already dead. Well, They're that's a capitalist an economy. We can have an argument about that. They're an authoritarian party, but a capitalist well, economy. They were, I don't think that's a great argument. Right. So, my but my point is, my point is to you, is that the church has survived for 2,000 years. So, Jesus is clearly onto something. Marx is not. So who's the better teacher? Jesus the Christ or Karl Marx? Well, what do you mean by Jesus? There are many different Jesuses. There's only Jesus one depends on your interpretation. I'm no, sorry, no. can you show what, what, what Christian group has a different interpretation? Was Jesus a socialist? Was Jesus taking socialist? it from another perspective? No, no, outside no, no. of outside Jesus was not a socialist. Well then, he was a theocrat. Why, why give up your wealth and share it out? He was a theocrat. Why give up your wealth and share it out? But that's voluntary. And it's only amongst it's those that it's want certainly, it. Certainly, you'd find a lot of quotations from Jesus Christ, which are citations basically, but a lot of citations from Jesus Christ, which, you know, they wouldn't be amiss with Jeremy Corbyn, would they? Sure, sure, sure. Fine. Let's, let's look at them. Can you show me one? Uh, Matthew. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a... I mean, you know them yourself. You don't require me. Yeah. Camel through the eye of a needle, you know, yeah. uh, give up your sword. Did Karl Marx say that people go to heaven? Of course he didn't say that. But it, So that's but not what Jesus is teaching? No, that's not what I said. I said, is, I said was Jesus a socialist? And the answer is obviously no. Yours, well, it's not obvious, really. Of course it is. Because there are many examples within the Bible yeah. of Jesus advocating things and doing things yes. which, could, which in modern times, or in certainly in the last 2,000 years, when the concept of socialism has emerged, you could draw parallels. And many people drew on Christianity as the root source for the philosophy of their interpretation of Christianity as a socialist doctrine. And so that socialism is not quite as simple. So as the, the idea that Christ was a socialist is, is totally fallacious. Christ was a theocrat who believed. Doesn't mean he's not a he was a, he, who, he was a theocrat who believed that he was the Messiah. The, 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 the very verse he that was the Messiah was Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> speaking. <laughs> <he's> speaking <laughs> as a historian. Sorry. Yeah, of course it is. That wasn't it. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> as a historian. Yeah. Jesus Christ believed himself to be the Messiah. His followers believed that he was the Messiah. Right? That is, an in, that is an, a, 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 a profoundly theocratic worldview. That is the essence of it. Because the Messiah yeah, is meant that, that to rule. That doesn't per se on, contradict the idea that he could be some kind of theocratic socialist, does it? Right. So hold on. Socialism, when everything was theocratic at one time, was Socialism it? doesn't believe in theocracies. Well, no, you're talking about modern socialism. You're not talking about historical socialism. No, I'm sorry. Historical. Frederick, Engels, Frederick Engels, Rosa Luxemburg, yeah. Karl Marx, they all thought that Jesus Christ should be interpreted as a kind of a utopian socialist. But the question is not and whether they... And there's a very good book on the subject. There's not whether... Uh, Kautsky's book, yeah. The Foundations of Christianity, but the, the which goes is... into detail analysing all the texts in the Bible that Jesus states, all the statements Jesus makes, which could be interpreted, and his actions. But that's historicism. Well, it's applying dialectical materials, in other words, an analysis of the material conditions yep. at the time yep. and the type of social relations at yep. the time and viewing what Jesus then represented within that context. Yep. And, and he that's represented. Historicism. Um, what, what is historicism? I mean, you're just throwing terms that sound clever. No, I'm not I a PhD. No, 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 I don't historicism? have a problem discussing in this type of what language. Is but it's not what I do at speech. What is historicism? It's a method to look, I mean, as far as I understand, a method to look at society purely from historical view. No. Analyzing no, historical methods. No, no. Historicism is not the study of history. So what are you saying? Historicism. Say what it is that historicism a waste of time. is the mythologizing of history. Why is it mythologizing? Because I said they're using material methods. They are not to looking at the like an historian. Time. An historian. Talking about. An historian looks at the evidence. He sees what? I'm going to answer. So he looks at. Let's look at whether Jesus was a socialist. Let's use that as our evidence example. of what? So I'm going to give. I'm giving you an example. I am literally well, going to answer you're your question. About, you're throwing historicism. I'm literally what? going to answer your question. So what is? What is? How do we do history? We have facts that we get from history because of records. We're going to use the example of whether Jesus was a socialist. What facts do you use? 
So we're going to use the example of Jesus' We're going to go nowhere with this. No, we are. I'll tell you why. But, but you're just, because, why because, don't you, why, why is it, because, why, because I asked you a simple, simple question. question. History, 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 we can, not, we can collect all facts. the facts, we can no. collect all the facts that are pertinent to the question. No. And we will still come to the conclusion that Jesus was not a socialist. I will have a debate with you, ladder on ladder. You can do it next week, you can prepare all your evidence, and we'll see if Jesus... I'm challenging you, right now. We still won't, we won't be able to answer that question. And I'm we challenging won't be able to clarify what his views are. I, I'm we won't challenging you to a debate. Sorry? I'm challenging you to a debate. Was Jesus oh, a socialist? God. Let's debate it next week. Uh, I don't mind debating it one day, maybe not next week. Just debate it. I'd have to go back to this and research, because you obviously know you're by. And I'd have to know the bits in the Bible. You're going to throw bits in the Bible at me and try to catch me out. But that's so what I'd, I'd have to have. Well, that's I'd the point. Have to have in that's the point of that. real history. No, it's not the point of real history. The, the point, point of real history is that you look at all no, that's the not facts, the point of real and then you draw your conclusion. Well, Historicism you is you only look at the facts, facts that support you your view. No, Who, whose history are we talking about? Whose history is real history? Exactly. We're talking about the history of Jesus Christ. So, is there so we've got to look at the evidence that we have about Jesus. Okay. Fine. Where do we if, find okay, that, none of that evidence? If you look at the history, none of that evidence, not a single word is going to hang himself in the now. Bible. Go on. Not a single word written in the Bible was written at the time when Jesus was alive. Brilliant. So not how can word. you say he was a socialist? Not a word. So how can you say he was a socialist? He was the mythology within the masses of someone who would act as a saviour of them from Roman enslavement. So Jesus wasn't even a real person now? He may or may not have been. He, I, he may I or may not have been, have been a combination. So, so the fact Hoshua. of the matter is... He may have been a myth, he may have been a real person. We don't so this know. Is what I mean. There's no evidence to show he existed. Done. You made a claim, Jesus was a socialist. You were certain yes, about it five Jesus minutes ago. No, no, I didn't say you five I never said ago, I was certain. You were Jesus, certain didn't Jesus ask you was about a that. socialist. I said, because and then when we pushed on your idea. argument, suddenly Jesus no, is now correct. a myth. That's not correct. This what is I said, not, I, I said to you a second ago, that's historical. I do not know if he existed or not. Nor do you. Yes, we do. You believe he existed. He is the on most the base of that attested. Book. You do no, not have any not just evidence. No, yes, I do. I have independent evidence. Josephus. Was says that Jesus existed. Suetonius said that Jesus Joseph existed. Has, has Tacitus said that Jesus existed. Julius Africanus said that Jesus the existed. Is, the Pliny the Younger said that Jesus existed. Celsus said that Jesus well, you're existed. Claiming these things, and you obviously haven't done the background research. No, you clearly have. Justify your argument. You clearly have. Because those quote those people you are citing. You just said. The only evidence that we have about Jesus was in the New Testament. I've just given you Jewish and evidence. pagan and evidence. Christian historians you, you who all them. demonstrate Christ they really existed. Demonstrate. He is they the most they attested name. person to from antiquity. Are you talking about Flavius Josephus the Jewish? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Okay, you correct. obviously haven't gone back and looked at those actual texts and then checked up what they were in the ancient Greek. Because these words, Jesus as Saviour, almost every single name name used at that time meant saviour, salvation, something like that. And a lot of those just, people, just, like Josephus, for example, has been shown to be forgery, a lot of the material. Uh, actually, actually, this the is what... The actual contemporary actually, witnesses actually, who are cited in the Bible are not actually, Josephus let's just, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They are Matthew, no, Mark I'm sorry, and others. I'm sorry. First your scriptures claim, written by contemporary... Your claim by those was that everything first, we know about Jesus was in the New Testament. I, I have given that. you examples outside of the New Testament but, but that speak about examples. Jesus as a real person. Now examples. you said Josephus was false. Fine, let's just chuck him in the bin. I'll use Tacitus. Tacitus have said that Jesus. Have you read Tacitus what he wrote? Said, in the Tacitus original said, language. Have you read it? Drusifer, have you read oh, now it? he sounds like the Dawa team. No, no, have you read no, it in the original no, language? Because scholars have translated it, bro. Tacitus says. Tacitus Why are you says, relying upon these Jesus Christ Romans and was Jews? crucified under Pontius Pilate was he crucified? in the reign of Tiberius. In the Bible, it doesn't say he was crucified. Every source that we One have part says about he hung from a tree. Oh, Another says he was he crucified. He now says that Jesus wasn't. Is there a citation which, in the Bible saying he was hung which, from a tree? Which gospel says that he wasn't crucified? I don't know, you tell me. You, I mean, which, I know for a fact that in the that Bible, it's not just said that he was crucified. Yes. It's also said yes. that he was hung from a tree. Yes, and when you nail someone to a cross, can you 
not describe the tree, the cross as a metaphor, but call it a tree? No, and are you not hanging? You're choosing, if I hang a picture on a wall by a nail, if I hang a picture, you're choosing to ignore no contradiction. contradictory evidence. What you're being, one says he no, was hung from a tree, no, another says being, he was crucified. You don't allow for idioms of language. Crucified. If I say I'm going to be with you in a minute, does it say I'm going to be with you in exactly 60 seconds? It's not quite the same thing as whether no, he's hung. No, it's an whether idiom. Whether hung, if you say that Jesus hung from a tree, everyone would have understood that, that Christ was crucified. So there is contradictory evidence, you don't it's deny. It's not You're just saying you can explain just it, an but you're accepting, language. you're accepting just there is a contradiction of language. in the Bible, you even about that force, fundamental question you as to whether to Jesus was crucified or hung from a tree. You've accepted you, there are statements so we've got, I don't know who said it. We've got witnesses it from the New Testament. Who said it? Who said he's hung from a tree? Paul. Paul. So Paul, Paul, who was a contemporary of Jesus, yep. supposedly, yes. said he was hung from a tree. Yes, he was Another alive guy when Jesus was alive. He was crucified. And he became a so Christian. in other words, I don't care whether he was crucified why. or hung from a tree. Did Jesus I don't live? care whether he existed or not. Did, did, did Jesus I think he was a mythical character. A mythical character. Who may or may yeah, not have existed. He may or may not have existed. The point the is that his you. role... You're asserting something that the evidence contradicts. That's Marxism all the over. The evidence isn't there. That's Marxism. It the says the evidence is not there. Paul wrote the evidence. about Jesus. Sorry? Luke wrote about but Jesus. But none of them wrote about John the wrote about Jesus. The first writing Mark about Jesus. wrote about Jesus. 30 years Josephus after he died. Josephus wrote about Th Jesus. But in the Bible, Suetonius 30 wrote about years Jesus. after he died. Am I Tacitus right or not? wrote about Jesus. 30 years afterwards. How many people need to write about Jesus before you believe Jesus was written? Do you believe Julius Caesar existed? Julius Caesar, we know existed. Why? Ah. Because there is considerable evidence that he existed. No, there are less evidence. documents and less witnesses to the life of Julius Caesar than there are to Jesus Christ. Okay, we'll leave it at that. No. The point being that you your don't own know your book, history. I was saying your own book does there not. There are less sources and less witnesses to the life of Julius okay, Caesar than there are to the life of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll go back and check on the Julius yeah, Caesar. I doubt that please. very much. Please. I doubt that very much. But the evidence presented in the Bible not by Josephus and Tacitus. Why don't you want to use Josephus or Tacitus? Because they are heathens, aren't they? I've got no problem with heathen witness. But why haven't you got actual witnesses from your we own group? We do have actual witnesses. You don't? We do have actual witnesses. But when were they written? When were they written? So the I'll first give you one. writing in the Bible about Jesus was 30 years after his death. Wrong. 30? Wrong. I believe it's Matthew. Right? You're just wrong. Plain wrong. Well, when was it? It's 10. Ten years. Ten. Okay, well we'll check that again. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, yeah? Cheers. Okay. Another day. What do you want to wrap up? No, it's enough. Very good. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I just Thank you, Hegel. That's your concept of truth. Well, yeah. It seems to me that there is an epistemological concept of truth, yeah. which we can know from evidential, which is always human beings can ever Yeah. And then there is an eschological concept of truth, which seems to be the one that you offer. Now, I um, would speak as a logical possibility. So I just want to posit this question to you. In any possible universe, however it can be designed, by whatever possible supreme being, one plus one must always equal two. That is a certain truth which exists independent of any divine being or any supernatural force. Agree or disagree? Um, no, I think it has to be founded on a, a, a more fundamental basis of reality. I agree with you that one plus one will always equal two. Yeah? However, what you've just done is given evidence for, for metaphysics. And metaphysics is the beginning of the supernatural. Because you've just spoken about concepts, about numbers, about... And, and bearing in mind that this language, this, this language that we use, is somehow like a magic code by which we can describe reality to the most incomprehensible levels of accuracy. And for me, this is actually an evidence that, that there is something more than the material, something more than simply a material world. It gives room for the supernatural. Okay. I'm, I'm distinguish between the supernatural and the abstract. I mean, as a Platonist, I believe that numbers exist outside of space and time. I have sympathy for that perspective, but I haven't quite made my own mind up yet. 
fair enough. Okay, because I think otherwise, if you did not, if you say that numbers did not exist outside of space and time, then it would be possible for a universe to exist where one plus one equals three, which would be a total logical contradiction. So, do you believe that God is logic? No, I don't believe that God can be reduced to logic. I think that God is the foundation upon which truth emerges. So you think it's the other way around? Logic comes from God? Logic comes from God. So what grounds God? God, God needs neither grounds. He doesn't have need. He is totally sufficient within himself. Okay, right. And he's, and he's not built okay. on anything else. He is, right. he is literally the lowest foundation that you can get to, and there is no lower. Because his foundation just goes on. So there's nothing right. deeper than God. So Logic yeah. emerges from it, and therefore numbers emerge, rationality emerges right. from it. And to me, what you're, as someone who has accepted the reality of metaphysical objects, like numbers, yeah. if you can accept the reality of metaphysical objects like numbers, why is the idea of a metaphysical being something that you have a problem with? Well, actually, I'm a logical positivist. So the ground of logical positivism is the rejection of metaphysics. Well, that's internally incoherent because you just accepted the idea of metaphysical objects like numbers. No, a number is not a metaphysical object. Object. Oh, oh, sorry, it's object. It is an actual ground of being. You're saying that Aristotle numbers are the gr that, you're, that, 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 that the whole of reality is based on numbers. Exactly. That is an interesting theory. So that would mean that they have no personality. Correct. That would mean that there would be no order to what they do. Their only order is in their integers. Um, Daedekin's postulate that between any series of integers there lies infinity. The right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, within any order of numbers, that is internally coherent within itself, but only of itself. But there's no, there's no morality. No, no morality. Right. No. Way. So there's nothing wrong with me killing you or you killing me. I would like it if you did, but um, on the on the on epistemology, I couldn't criticise you. Right. But but you would agree that everything in you tells you that that's wrong. Uh, well, yes, obviously I would like you to kill me. But you would also agree that everything in you emerges from the reality of numbers. Um, my... Answer this question, pause. Okay, sorry. Answer, answer, answer. Okay, sorry. Um, I, would, I would say that my mental state is entirely dependent on my neurological state. And my neurological state can be arithmetically and numerologically described. Right. So I'll pause. But, you're, no, but, but what you're saying is, no, but what you're saying is, all of this is emerging from numbers. It doesn't emerge from numbers because there's nothing actually to emerge from. There's no so physical where, where, reality. Where did the material reality? Where, where, where did the material come from? No, the numbers actually describe. I know they describe, but, but you're saying that the grounding of reality is right. numbers. Correct. Right. Yeah. Now, as a language that. The, 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 the universe is clearly coded and we have tapped into that code through mathematics. Correct. That's why we can do the most amazing things. Correct. Like with a hydron collider and stuff like that. Precisely. Yeah. Right? I, I am fully on board with the idea of science, got no problem with it at all. Right. But, but what it seems to me you're saying, and I agree with you, that code of mathematics allows us to describe the universe. Got no argument. Okay. Right. We're on the same page. Okay. Right. But where does it come from? I, right. The material. Right. I personally, I mean, and many people would dispute this, uh, I know. I personally believe in the uncaused cause. The uncaused in, cause. In the Aristotelian yeah. ethics. And, and that is exactly as, as Christians believe, and this uncaused cause we call God. Okay, fair enough. Um, right. That's a very interesting argument. And to be honest, there's no way I can possibly refute that. Because you agree with it. Because yeah, I don't have the evidence to do that. So me and you are on the same page about mathematics being a, a code that describes reality. Right, yeah. To a measurable, okay. unreason... Would you agree that it's unreasonable how amazingly accurate mathematics is in describing the physical universe? Ah, it's not unreasonable how accurate it is. It can't be anything else than accurate. But, but, it, but it's you unreasonable... You not have an inaccurate it's power, mathematics. It, it's powers of description it itself. belie belie the idea that we just invented it. No, 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 we didn't invent it. Exactly, that's my we point. We discovered it. Exactly, that's my point. 
Would you agree that it's language? I would say that both language and mathematics are reducible to logic. Brilliant. Would you say that logic and language are products of mind? Oh. Are they produced? Products of mind. Products of mind. Right. To be honest with you, if I'm going to be consistent in my beliefs, I would have to say no. No. Because I would say that even if the planet Earth did not exist, that no humans existed, even if the universe had never existed, numbers would still exist. Right. So, so that if there is no material world, you're saying numbers exist. Yeah. So now we go back to something that I tried to draw out from you earlier. No. If I killed you, that would be wrong, right? It would be wrong by the definition of a certain society. No, what I mean is, everything in, in you, everything in you says, "Don't kill me." That would be wrong. You've got no logic for it, but everything in you tells you that. I don't know what this thing in me is. Right, but, but it still tells you I shouldn't kill you, right? I obviously don't want you to kill me. No. Right, so, but what you're saying is that that emerges uh -huh. from numbers. Because you're saying if the whole material world didn't exist, numbers would still exist. But the whole material world does exist, and therefore you exist. And you do have this experience that says, I shouldn't kill you. So at yeah. bottom, those numbers have given you but that can desire. I, but can I ground truth upon my own personal experience? For all I know, you might be a phantom of my imagination. Right. But, but, but here's my point. If you're saying, if you're saying, if you're saying that the that, that numbers give rise to the material yeah. and therefore give rise to you and therefore give rise to your idea of don't kill me then that means there has been movement within the material from the numbers towards purpose do you see my logic i do yes would you agree that purpose is a product of mind yes right so if numbers have purpose, they have mind. If they have mind and they're uncaused, so we've got an uncaused cause that has a mind, that you're calling numbers and I'm calling God. Ah. <laughs> the wasps. Yeah, yeah. I'm attracted even to wasps. <laughs> yeah? Would yeah. you see my logic? I do, yes. We're calling yeah. the same yeah. thing by different terms. Okay, it seems to me that you're talking rather about uh, John Hawkinghorn's cosmological arguments. Well, that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's also the idea of necessary being and contingent being. Okay, right. Yes, exactly. Because we agree, yeah. Yeah. we agree that at base there is something that is a necessary being. You're calling that numbers, right. and I'm calling that God. Okay, you're interpreting the idea of numbers as being being. I would disagree with that. I do not think that numbers are ontological in any sense or form. So in what way I do they exist? Logical. They exist outside of space and time. Yes, but that's a being. No. That is, not a, that is an existence, isn't it? No. It's, a, no. it's not an existence. No, it's not ontological in any way whatsoever. Now I think that your worldview is collapsing into right. sophism. Ah, okay. Because right. you're, you're saying that numbers would exist independent yes. of anything else. Yes. That's necessary. Correct. But if they exist, that's being. So that's necessary being. No, because you can exist without being. In a total abstract sense. But because that's that's sophism, because you're saying existence being, does is does something is something that exists there. Not necessarily, no. But this is that this is Because you're talking about abstract existence or physical existence. I'm talking about real existence, whether it's not physical, okay. I accept it's not physical. So, but so if, I'm, if, not talking if, about, I'm not talking about no. material existence. Everything that exists has to have an ontological ground of being. I, I'm saying that it must, if something necessarily exists, it exists. Which you would describe as God. And therefore it has being. That's a very Thomistic argument. It is, surprisingly. I'm all right with that. I, I'm amazed at that. I would have thought you were a Thomist. Yeah, so, so my go. point is, my yeah. point is to you, yeah. you, we've both identified, right, right the idea of a, a necessary being to all of the things, yeah. that is an uncaused cause, right. that has mind, 
because it demonstrates mind through purpose. Okay, correct. So there's a right. teleology right. To, towards a final cause. Yeah, but our lives That's move Aristotle. towards a yeah. final cause, and therefore the thing that gives rise to that final cause has demonstrated purpose. Yeah. And therefore it has mind. So bro, you, why don't you just believe in God? Because like like I mean don't don't be proud in your heart. Don't be proud in your heart. If if the logic of our argument leads us to God, we should fear not to go there. Right, yeah. If the promised land is on the other side of the lake, and and the boat is sufficient to get us to the other side, let us complete the journey. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, very nice to talk to you. So, can I, did you study a philosophy or theology? Uh, I studied philosophy at university. Right, which, okay, right. And right. I studied religion. You have a, you have a very sophisticated and I studied, and I studied physics. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I did a uh, philosophy of maths at UCL, yeah. and then went on to statistical genetics. Well, uh, you know. Have you got a Bible? I haven't, no. Yeah. But anyway, it was very I'd nice like to give you. Oh, no, no, I'm giving it to you as a gift. Oh, well. You've been a pleasant guy, please yeah. accept it as a gift. Please read it. I will do it. Yeah. New okay. Testament, start right. in the New Testament. But oh, I, I would just encourage you that if if you can see the logic of our argument leads us to God, don't hold back from going there. Yeah. Because when you accept that reality, there'll be other questions that emerge. Okay. That yeah. you must then follow with the same integrity. Right, of course, yeah. If the if the promised land is on the other side of the lake and the boat is enough to get you there, complete the journey. Right. You already believe in an uncaused cause that has necessary being, that has mind. Well, I'm, so, I'm certainly not a Marxist, like I can't. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, anyway it's really very nice to, to talk to you. Take, Take care, care, my friend. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah. So, I ended up talking with Heiko, who wanted to jump on the back of a conversation, uh, a preach, I guess, that I was giving about the reality of the resurrection. And Heiko demonstrates immediately the falsity of Marxism, because Marxism is a self-contradictory ideology that claims that metaphysics is false while premising itself upon the existence of metaphysics. It believes that it can identify the true course of history leading to a Marxist state. That is a truth claim based upon a Hegelian dialectic. And if someone is making a truth claim based upon a Hegelian dialectic, they are appealing to metaphysics. If then they are saying on the other hand, metaphysics don't exist, then that is the equivalent of saying that A is equal to B, B is equal to C, but A is not equal to C, it's self-contradictory. He also acknowledges that Marxism hasn't worked. There is no communist state. It has never worked, so it fails. And it also contradicts reality because it works from, and it is a, a point that I didn't get to explore with him, which is that he was arguing that Marxism would lead to a communist man. A communist man, a new way of being human. However, that is based upon the idea of, of a, a metaphysical reality. That, that human beings can change by the construct of their societies. And I accept, this is one truth about communism that is fair, that the way our economy works forms human nature. But human nature is always inherently sinful regardless of what society you put around human nature. We will always lie, we will always steal, we will always kill, we will always dishonor our parents, we will always break the law of God, which is to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. Why? Because our nature is sinful. And Marxism doesn't believe that. And that is why Marxism fails. Because it believes that human beings are a blank sheet of paper. I leave it to you. Thank you, Bob.